Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about the just released version of Onyx Runtime version 1.13. We're going to do an overview of everything that was in it, and then we're going to jump in and talk to some of the devs that built the features out to get a deeper look at what was built. Faith is going to tell us a little bit more about what was actually released in Onyx Runtime. So the first couple of things is uh, a couple of security patches. Um, so security is obviously very important to us. So we want to ensure that Onyx Runtime does address all um, security vulnerabilities. Um, so it's just a couple of things that we patch in this release and we try to keep up to that as you know quickly as we can in the main branch and then obviously in each uh, subsequent releases. All right. Um, so in terms of just general um, updates, so a lot of these are uh, bug fixes and things that we react um, and fix when we have customers that report issues. Um, so we work very heavily with a lot of teams within Microsoft, as well as um, the GitHub issues that are posted and, uh, from the community. So um, we try to you know, patch things when people have issues and encounter, um, un encounter unsupported things. Um, on the performance front, we're really focusing on Transformers um, CUDA performance. So um, on GPU, we're trying to ensure that the Transformer models can run really optimally with quantization. And uh, we recently added um, broader support for the quantization scenario end-to-end -end for BERT on, on GPU. So we have some uh, notebooks and improved documentation on how you can go through this with um, tr doing the quantization process um, for, for BERT and running that. Um, other than that, uh, we also have added uh, a quantization debugging tool. So um, this allows you to debug any type of discrepancies you might uh, find as you are doing the quantization process and you know seeing accuracy drops. So this tool will help you identify where that problem might be occurring to make it easier to uh, root, root cause this. Um, so moving on to the execution provider updates. Uh, so uh, we've made the updates to what we consider our tier one EPs. And these are the EPs that we, uh, at Microsoft, our team at Microsoft actively invest in because we see that these are the most commonly used and most popular EPs from our customers. Uh, and these include the CUDA EP and Tensor RT for, um, EP for NVIDIA, OpenVINO EP, and um, DirectML EP. So for all of these, we continue to work on updates to support the latest versions that are released of those hardware libraries. Um, and we bought, you know, adding quantization and additional support. So, um, yeah. And yeah, and so also later on, we're going to talk to the DirectML um, EP dev who worked on the updates, and we're going to learn more about what was added this time. The last thing to call out on the EP front is the new CAN EP. So this is an EP that was contributed by Hop Huawei um, to support their Ascend 310 hardware. So um, you can check that out and there we have build instructions for that if that is a hardware that you are interested in, in using and accelerating. Awesome. So uh, for ORT Mobile, um, we have added some EP infrastructure updates so to make um, this more compatible with new EPs such as the XNN, XNN pack. So one thing to note is that um, as part of this change, the ORT format models need to be regenerated since the format change is not backwards compatible. Um, so that's just something to note if you are using ORT um, Mobile. And um, the other thing that we added and we can talk to, uh, we will talk to uh, one of the devs about later is the mm -hmm. XNN pack um, and that uh, improve, uh, adds a lot of improvements for performance um, if you are using mobile. Great. Well, thank you so much, Faith, for giving us that fantastic overview of what was released with the new version of Onyx Runtime. Next, we're going to jump in and dive into some of the features that are now out. Thanks, Cassie. All right. Now I am joined by Dwayne. He is a senior uh, software developer on the Onyx Runtime team. And he worked on some of the updates with the direct ML execution provider. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Cassie. So what can you tell us about the direct ML execution provider? Maybe if somebody isn't familiar with what it is. Um, it's one of the many execution providers within Onyx runtime that is stacked upon, obviously, direct ML, which is a machine learning API that's been in Windows since uh, it was publicly released in 2019. And it's an API that supports at least uh, 150 various operators. Many of them are fairly one-to-one -one with uh, Onyx specification. So it fit fairly well into Onyx runtime. Awesome. And so what are some of the advantages of using the DirectML um, execution provider? Well, it's 
unlike a number of other EPs, it's device agnostic, which means if you are developing a, a general Windows application and you have no clue what the final user is going to have on their machine, what kind of GPU, it should still work. Um, with any GPU that supports up to DirectX 12, which has been around since Windows 10 at least, um, and even certain NPUs, which are uh, devices that are specifically written uh, for or created for ML workloads. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So it really kind of makes it easier to kind of get that optimization while using Onyx Runtime to um, optimize for Windows machines, right? Yeah, and not just Windows. It also works with uh, WSL um, oh. if you have that installed. And cool. it doesn't have the huge cost that a lot of other, you know, like many hundreds of megabytes installers have um, at nine megabytes, which isn't tiny, but it's also not hundreds of megabytes. And so it doesn't require your users to like pre-install this large library. Cool. So what can you tell us is um, new about it within Onyx Runtime within uh, this uh, booth? Well, for 1.13, it wasn't nearly as large as 1.12. We added five new operators, including like DFT, uh, Galo layer normalization. Um, but it was really 1.12 where we kind of played catch up with the uh, Onyx offsets, offsets okay. 13 through 15. Uh, we added like updates to 25 new operators. Yeah, we also updated uh, DML version to 1.9. So it sounds like it has a lot more support for different model architectures, and it's just going to make it easier for people to be able to leverage this execution provider within Onyx Runtime. All right, Dwayne, thank you so much for giving us that update on what is new with the direct ML execution provider in the new release of Onyx Runtime. Thank you, Cassie. Now I am joined by our mobile lead, Scott McKay. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us today. And he is going to be telling us about one of the updates from uh, the mobile side of things for the new release. Yeah. So Excellent and Pack is a, an open source library that has a bunch of low level kernels um, that are written in assembler for different platforms. So for Onyx Runtime, we have our own like MLAS, the Microsoft Linear Algebra subsystem. So we have a bunch of handwritten kernels for that, but there's certain gaps, especially with mobile, with say older devices, like if you're running um, V7, like a 32-bit um, device, we wouldn't have a kernel for that. Um, so what Excellent Impact does is by having an execution provider that uses that library, we can fill in the performance gaps on those platforms where we don't have our own hand-coded implementation. So it's just another way that will allow people to get the performance that they need with their models. Yeah, for sure. So given the Excellent Pack execution provider is pretty new, we're gradually expanding the kernels that it supports. Um, so right now it should cover pretty well common image processing models, um, but we are, we're also looking at which, which gaps there are in the operator support and we'll fill those in based on um, popular models and demand as well. So how do you enable uh, this new execution provider and what platforms does it support? So as with any execution provider in Onyx Runtime, you need to manually choose to enable it. Um, the reason for that is what's best will depend on your model. And especially for mobile, it will depend on the, the actual device you're running it on. Um, we've included it in the Onyx Runtime Android uh, package uh, because Android has a wider range of devices that tends to have um, more lower end phones versus the iOS ecosystem. Um, so stuff like the ARM v7, the 32-bit ARM support um, will be useful on Android, whereas it won't be used on any iOS devices. We're looking at enabling it also for iOS and Xamarin or Maui builds in, in the following release. Awesome. So Android developers are getting some kind of new fun features that they can go play around with and uh, see what works for their model and use the uh, the best execution provider to get the performance that they need for the different For sure. Models. Like you really need to test on specific devices to figure out what's best. Is there anything else that you want to share about this new feature? Um, definitely if you play around with it and performance isn't as you expect, we can take a look at, at your model and see if there are operators we can add support to the X and MPAC EP2. Given yeah. it's fairly new, we're still fleshing out that, that set of operators. Great. Well, thank you so much for stopping in and telling us about this new feature. Thanks, Cassie. Next up, we are talking to Lei. He worked on a really cool feature in this new release. 
around um, optimizations for BERT model quantization. Can you tell us a little bit more about this new feature? Oh, definitely. Thanks, Casey. Uh, as the uh, transformer-based uh, model are more and more popular, so the performance is highly needed by a lot of uh, partners. So uh, quantization could give the more uh, better speed than the FP16 in the GPU. So we want to, to get this improvement. Uh, we do a lot of uh, optimization for the uh, CUDA execution provider to run the quantized bird model. Mm -hmm. Now, and you know, with the uh, after quantized to integrate, they are generally may cause some accuracy lost. Yeah. So, and how we do the quantized aware training is highly coupled with how we optimize the Onyx runtime execution engine in the uh, CUDA. So we give the examples on how we do the bird model quantize aware training. Uh, with that, the people could just uh, incorporate our code or follow the our code, and then they could uh, retrain the bird model with the intake. Uh, and exported uh, after exported, we have uh, tools to optimize the model and get the uh, optimized int eight model directly run faster in our Onyx runtime. So by better supporting the quantize aware training, which is happening in PyTorch, now when you do quantization in Onyx runtime, you can get further optimization while keeping as much ac accuracy as possible. So tell me, with the new feature um, within the quantization uh, tool. Is there anything else that they need to do to use it? Or is it just now when they quant use the quantization tools within um, Onyx runtime for BERT models, are they just gonna see um, better performance or do they have to do something kind of special with this new feature or with yeah. this new optimization, I should say? I think I think in with the BERT model, after the uh, they do the quantize aware training and, the ex, uh, and you uh, following the uh, examples to export the model, we we have the offline tools to optimize the model that most fit our uh, new version of Onyx runtime, and it just gets supported to get the better speed. Yeah. Thank you so much for that overview of the new quantization optimizations within Onyx runtime for the BERT models. Um, I'm sure people enjoy getting that additional performance when using those ORT features. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thanks so much for hanging out with us today. I hope you're excited about the new features in Onyx Runtime. Be sure to let us know what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time.